The 2023 Mets rotation was headlined by two big name veteran arms in Max Scherzer and Justin Verlander. The big move for the Mets that offseason was of course signing Verlander to a massive $86 million contract over two years. That of course came just a year after signing Max Scherzer to a $130 million contract over three years. Alongside Verlander came a much smaller contract in the form of starting pitcher Kodai Senga. Senga's contract was valued at 5 years $75 million, which is nowhere near the money that Verlander got. While he may have cost a fraction of the future Hall of Famer, Senga has proved that he is Major League Baseball's next big star pitcher and is way more valuable than Justin Verlander at this point, and I don't think many people realize just how good he is. Senga was of course signed out of the NPB, the professional baseball league in Japan, and he did nothing but dominate in that league. In over 1300 innings, he recorded an ERA of just 2.42 while striking out 10 batters per 9 and walking 3.4 batters per 9. These numbers obviously won't 100% translate to Major League Baseball since the hitters in the NPB are not as talented as those in Major League Baseball. While the top end stars are up there with Major League Baseball as we saw in the World Baseball Classic last year, the depth of the lineups is not quite there yet. Those numbers, however, are still very, very good. He was the ace of a team that won four straight Japan series, which are the equivalent to the World Series in Japan. Obviously, this guy is good, but there is still some inherent risk when signing a guy from an international league. The NPB uses a different kind of baseball than Major League Baseball does, so that could mess him up. And there were always the questions if he can replicate the success in Major League Baseball, but the Mets took that risk and signed him. I think now it's safe to say that the risk has paid off. In his first year in America, Senga pitched 166 innings over 29 starts, posting a 2.98 ERA. He struck out 10.9 batters per 9 innings while walking 4.2 per 9. He finished runner-up in NL Rookie of the Year to Corbin Carroll and finished 7th in the Cy Young voting. He was also selected to be an All-Star in his first year in the league. Digging into some of the deeper analytics, they say pretty much the same thing. He's above average in most of the metrics and is kind of similar to Garrett Cole's profile. The only thing better than looking at these numbers though is looking at the arsenal because at the end of the day, a pitcher can only be as good as the pitches that he throws. Senga has a six pitch arsenal made up of four seam fastball, a cutter, a forkball, a slider, a sweeper, and a curveball. Right next to each of these pitches is the rate at which he throws them. We can take each of these pitches and group them into the three main categories of pitches, fastballs, breaking balls, and off-speed pitches. Let's first take a look at the fastballs. He throws the four-seamer 37% of the time, which makes it his most used pitch by a pretty good margin. He throws it around 95 to 96 miles per hour, which is pretty good for a starter. The spin rate is around the middle of the pack, as it is 43rd amongst qualified starters four-seamers. This makes it a relatively flat pitch, which doesn't bode well for the results. The cutter, on the other hand, is a different story. It is categorized as one whole pitch, as it is a fastball that doesn't really have a four seam movement on it, but Senga throws it to where he can get three different movements on it. There is one version of the cutter where it breaks like a traditional one, going glove side or away from a right handed hitter. There's another one where he throws it and it breaks straight down, which is the most common movement you'll see from Senga's cutter. Then there's the one that breaks arm side, which is the opposite of what a cutter normally does. Taking a look at all these three pitches, they all move differently, but they are also all categorized as cutters. Senga has a lot of vertical movement on his cutter. It has 1.2 inches more vertical drop than the average cutter at that velocity and release point. This causes the batter to get on top of the ball more often than not because the ball is lower than they are expecting it to be. Comparing the stats between the two different fastballs, we can see that the cutter has performed a lot better. It has a lower expected batting average and slugging percentage, meaning that the hitters are hitting a lot of ground balls and a lot of weak contact. To measure the value that the cutter provided last year, we can use run value, which admittedly is not the most solidified stat in the world, as it only counts pitches that had a result, like the ball was put in play or the batter struck out. But this stat combines the quality of the pitch that is being thrown, along with the quantity that it was being thrown at to see how valuable a pitch was. And Senga's cutter ranked 15th in the entire league. We can use run value per 100 pitches to even out the sample sizes and get everyone on the same playing field in terms of quantity. Senga's cutter ranks 12th in this metric. No matter how you put it, it was one of the best pitches in the entire league in 2023. Now you may think, why does he even throw the four seamer then just make the cutter his primary fastball? Well, we'll get into that a little bit later, but for now, let's move on to the breaking balls. Breaking balls are a huge part of Senga's game, but he does throw three different types of them. The slider, the sweeper, and the curveball. 
The curveball is a very weird pitch, but I kind of like how he uses it. It doesn't get a whole lot of movement, and he doesn't throw it all that often, as it is about 1 in every 50 pitches he throws. He throws it very slow, as it comes in at around 73 miles per hour. He threw 73 curveballs in total in 2023, and 54 of them were on the first pitch of an at-bat. He uses this pitch almost exclusively to steal a strike on the first pitch, because no hitters coming up to the plate sitting on the sixth pitch in the arsenal. Once or twice a game, he can flip the curveball in for a strike, and he's ahead in the count 0-1. Only one out of the 73 curveballs that Senga threw resulted in a hit, and that was a home run from Nolan Arenado. So, he did get beat once, but the other 72 times, nothing really happened. The slider and sweeper are both thrown around 6% of the time. The slider has been thrown to mostly righties, while the sweeper has been thrown to both hands at the plate. The sweeper without a doubt has been Senga's worst pitch. It gets hit pretty hard, and you can just take a look at the numbers here. The slider does a lot better comparatively. The main problem with the sweeper is the fact that it gets a lot less horizontal break than the average sweeper. The main purpose of a sweeper is to get that sweeping action across the strike zone, and Senga doesn't really accomplish that. Now, it's finally time to get to the off-speed pitch, which of course is the forkball. The forkball is a pretty rare pitch in the majors nowadays, as only one other pitcher threw one in 2023, and that was Matt Karasidi, who was not all that good, so Senga was the only one to throw a forkball effectively. What is a forkball? Well, it's got this weird grip similar to a splitter, but a little more pronounced, and the fingers actually don't go on the laces. The index finger and middle finger are basically on either side of the baseball. The movement of a forkball is very similar to a standard 12-6 curve, it just drops off the table. The pitches, however, couldn't be more different. Senga throws the forkball with a spin rate of around 1100 RPM, which is less than R.A. Dickey's knuckleball was. The goal of a forkball is to get as little as spin rate as possible. Curveballs, you want a high spin rate. The physics behind a forkball are pretty simple. The only real force that is on a forkball as it leaves the pitcher's hand is gravity. When there's no backspin on the ball to oppose that gravitational force like there is on a fastball, the ball is going to drop a lot more. This is what makes the pitch so effective. While it has the same movement as a curveball, it looks a lot different to batters in the box. The curveball is much easier to recognize as the batters can read the topspin on the ball and pick up on the movement a lot earlier. The forkball looks a lot more like a fastball, and hitters don't realize that it is in fact not a fastball until it is too late. Senga's forkball has been nicknamed the ghost fork because it looks like a fastball, then it just disappears like a ghost. Just look at this overlay between Senga's four-seamer and his forkball. Right here, it looks like the same pitch, then, just moments later, the batter is walking back to the dugout after the forkball broke out of the strike zone and the batter swung and missed. This brings me back to the point of the four-seamer, why he throws it so much. He uses it to set up the forkball. Without the threat of the four-seamer, the forkball would not be as effective. The batter has to honor the fact that Senga can blow one by them at 96 miles per hour in order to get out ahead against them with the forkball. He almost exclusively throws it down at the bottom of the edge of the strike zone or below, which is obviously a great spot for it. So let's take a look at the numbers behind the Ghost Fork. There were 596 different individual pitches that recorded at least 100 plate appearances in 2023 by various pitchers throughout the league. Out of all of them, the one that forced the most swing and miss? Senga's Forkball, with a whopping 59.5% whiff rate. The Forkball was far and away the best swing and miss pitch in 2023. Blake Snell's curveball was second at 56.3%. In fact, since StatCast began tracking individual pitch whiff rate in 2019, Senga still holds that title. No pitch has ever recorded a higher whiff rate in a single season than the forkball did in 2023. Not Jacob deGrom's slider in 2021, not Edwin Diaz's slider in 2022, there's not been a nastier pitch than Senga's forkball. Looking at some other stats in the forkball, it's third amongst all pitches in expected batting average behind Fernando Cruz's splitter and Blake Snell's curveball. It's second in expected slugging percentage and sixth in expected weighted on base average. These metrics all take into account the quality of contact hitters are getting off the pitch, which are things like exit velocity and launch angle. And I think it's pretty safe to say that hitters are having a hard time hitting the ghost fork. Now, Senga is far from a perfect pitcher, as there are some parts of his game that he could use some improvements. He averaged just 5.7 innings per start in 2023, which is not quite a number that you would want from an ace. And that is not because he was on some sort of pitch count, as he averaged 97 pitches per start, which is a good amount for the modern game. The lack of innings stems from the control problem. 
He had a walks per nine of 4.17, which is pretty high. And the walks themselves, of course, are a big hindrance to a pitcher, but they also limit the amount of innings that they can throw. He found himself in a lot of deep counts as well, which also doesn't help towards the innings pitched. When he got behind in the count, he would become a lot more predictable as a pitcher. He would never use the forkball behind in the count, which of course is his best pitch. Taking a look at this Plinko chart from Baseball Savant, it shows Senga's pitch selection based on the count. If you look at the 1-0, 2-0, 2-1, 3-0, .0, and 3-1 counts, almost all of them are exclusively filled with four seamers and cutters. Senga's big threat is that forkball, and when hitters get ahead in the count, he seems like he's afraid to throw it. This means hitters can sit on the fastball. Now, the cutter is a lot better than the four-seamer on its own, which is the pitch that gets him out of these counts from time to time. Senga is probably a lot more confident at throwing the two fastballs for strikes than he is with the forkball, which is important when behind in the count since the last thing you want to do is throw another ball and get even further behind. Now, there are two possible ways to address this problem. One is getting him to throw that four ball when he's behind the count. This will cause the batters obviously to have to respect that and maybe not tee off on the fastball as much as they have been. The other is getting the control down to the point where he's not finding himself behind in counts that often. Taking all this into account, what is the future looking like for Kodai Senga? The first thing that I will tell you is that Kodai Senga will win a Cy Young at some point in his career. You just don't see a guy with this kind of stuff not have a dominant year at some point. That might be next year, it might be 2025, but I would be willing to put a lot of money into him winning a Cy Young at some point in his major league career, as long as he stays healthy. Now, the first thing that we have to talk about when it comes to predicting a future of a player is their age. Senga will be 31 on opening day of 2024. Even though he was a rookie, he's not young. Luckily for him though, his best pitch, the forkball, is known for being a pitch that the old guys can throw. You don't need elite velocity, you don't need to rip it at 3000 RPM, he will be able to throw that well into his 30s. His biggest weakness though is his control and he needs to improve on that which I think he will. MLB uses a different ball than the NPB and that could be a reason why Senga's walk numbers increased when he came over to America. If you take a look at his numbers in the second half of 2023 compared to the first, you can see that he got a lot better over time, especially in the walk numbers. This shows good signs of improvement and it makes his projection into next year look a lot better for me. A lot of people may also point to the lack of a good breaking ball in his arsenal. His sweeper got awful results last season and his slider was just okay. But in my opinion, when you have an off-speed pitch that is nasty as his fork ball, I don't really care about having a great breaking ball. While it would be nice to have, I don't think it's nearly the end of the world for Kodai Senga. Let me know what it looks like for you. I think Senga is going to be really good here for the Mets and I can almost guarantee that he's going to win a Cy Young at some point if he stays healthy. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more and like the video I guess. Helps me out. See you next week. Goodbye.